Hi everyone, um, welcome to my panel. Um, it's gonna be about doing Lolita laundry. Um, this isn't gonna specifically be about laundry for Lolita clothes. I just like alliteration. Um, this is gonna be a great panel if you're just uncomfortable with hand washing your more expensive items. Um, hopefully you'll find this helpful. Um, just a heads up, I, because of my setup, I'm not able to read comments and also be like looking at the comments on my presentation. So I will not be able to see what any of y'all are saying until the very end of the panel. Um, my hope is the actual presentation will only take up like a, a slit, like a chunk of time. And then I'll be able to just go into full Q and A mode and I'll even do some like hand washing live if it all works out. So without further ado, um, welcome to Lolita Laundry. So basically my hope is to talk about yellowing, color bleed, food stains, and the great outdoors. But I'll also talk about um, cleaning some more uncommon materials like silk, velvet, and pleather. Um, I will not be talking about leather cleaning because that is like an, an entire presentation on its own. So just a quick intro, uh, my name is Avina. I'm older than I look and uh, I use they, them pronouns. Um, I enjoy the thrill of wearing all white to a bar. <laughs> I chose this photo um, of myself because I'm mostly wearing items that I restored. Um, they arrived to me incredibly yellowed and um, it doesn't look like all the whites match in this photo, but they definitely match in real life. Um, they came to me like honestly looking like I don't know, gingivitis yellow, like they were pretty yellow. Um, so I really got into um, just doing laundry, I guess, and like being more involved with like how I'm hand washing, both as a way to be more sustainable, but also because I found out from a friend in Japan that a lot of white colorways of clothing were just being tossed because they were yellow. And it's so easy to remove yellowing. It broke my heart to hear that like, that's why sometimes it's harder to find white colorways of older items, just because they felt like it was unsalvageable. There's nothing they could do about it. So here's some common misconceptions. Um, my slides are fairly dense. Um, so I'm gonna kind of move through them uh, a bit faster because I don't wanna just be reading off the slides. But um, here's some common misconceptions I hear all the time when it comes to Lolita. Um, you know, all Lolita must be dry cleaned. Incorrect. Um, never store your Lolita clothes in plastic, honestly, at least for extended periods of time. It's of course fine if you're just like quickly moving or something, or, you know, like you're going from point A to point B and you plan to like take your clothes out of the plastic. That's great. Um, there, you absolutely can save your whites from yellowing. Um, and you can keep your clothes in a very long bath they will love it and they will come out cleaner for it. Also, please wash your clothes. <laughs> so I've got some bad news. <laughs> like there are some stains that really are just gonna be hard to get out um, and probably won't budge. Um, I've had some stains that if you look fairly closely, um, you'll know that they're there, but they do fade like such a large amount, like I feel like most people won't even notice them. So I've never had an item that was so badly stained, I could just never wear it again. It's just now a different kind of dress and I love it for different reasons now. Um, this is like a great slide to just take a screen cap of or, you know, just look up these laundry symbols and kind of save them. Um, a lot of like all fashion clothes are from Japan. So they use laundry symbols versus like um, a lot of like labels in the US will actually like put into detail exactly what you can do to launder your clothes. Um, la laundry symbols are a great thing to keep an eye on. Um, I'm not gonna go into like the nitty gritty cause there's so many, but I think the most important ones to keep track of is the ironing level because I've definitely burned holes through clothing before. <laughs> and um, just if they recommend not using um, petroleum dry cleaning, I will probably, I will go into this later, but like in general, you don't want to use petroleum solvent dry cleaning. It's just awful for the environment. It's honestly awful for your clothes. Um, you're like, just look out for places that say they don't use petroleum solvents. 
And I can't believe I have to say this, but do not mix these cleaning products. Bad news. Um, like these things will either create a chemical reaction that like burns your skin and eyes or uh, they they stink or they don't do anything or it's just you don't like just don't mix these things um cocktailing your cleaning products is just a really bad idea and of course the cardinal rule of laundry is test for color fastness i have um not washed every single print or clothing item in the world um but I can give you some guidelines. Your waist ties are a great place to test for color fastness because generally, you know, they are getting like bundled up and tied up and no one can really tell if um, the print bled or if, you know, it ended up getting bleached <laughs> on accident or anything like that. Um, I really love that. I also love, um, it's hard for me to point it out here, but Jumper or jumper skirts tend to have like straps that can button on sometimes. So there'll be a little bit of like extra length um to those straps you can test for color fastness there because that always gets tucked into the bodice um so that's a great place to test as well um just generally you want to make sure that um putting a specific dress into water isn't going to bleach or bleed them to the point where they're unrecognizable this doesn't happen that often anymore and i'll get into that later but um always always test for color fastness um, test every time you change to a new detergent because even if it was happy with one detergent it might be really sad with another <laughs> so just make sure you're always testing for color fastness so i like to have like four basic items um when i do my hand washing now i am like super lucky i have two bathrooms in my current place and this bathtub basically is only used by guests thanks to covid I don't have guests so I tend to use this bathtub but um a, a big like five gallon plastic bucket is great too I don't recommend um, washing your clothing and anything um, steel because sometimes there's reactions with the detergents and the steel and it also sometimes can like put like a weird metallic smell to your clothes so just stick with a plastic bucket um you can just buy like a paint bucket from like home depot or any sort of like home improvement store and those are great they come with handles it's awesome um honestly though I, if you have a bathtub i am a huge advocate for bath, like just using your bathtub um the downside is if you know you have a more heavily stained item you probably are going to need to use the bathtub before you have a chance to drain it um before you have a chance to like actually take the clothes out so that's why plastic bucket's great um old toothbrushes so i have one here as well i really like a nice old toothbrush this is just some old like travel size toothbrush um they're great for scrubbing detergent into your clothes in general like agitation and just getting into like the fibers is like the most important part of stain removal um they also sell laundry brushes but like you really you can just use an old toothbrush it's fine in fact i actually prefer the old toothbrush because this laundry brush is like a little large <laughs> so this is great um i like to have a bunch of just white towels around um for one thing i don't like using colored towels in case the color from the towels bleed onto your clothes so just stick with white um you can like wash them in like heavier duty washes so like if they do get dyed for some reason the dye will come out um, and also just a nice spray bottle. Um, I use this when I spot clean because in general detergent reacts better to cloth that's already been wet. So sometimes if I just want to clean like one little section, um, I like to just kind of get at it with a spray bottle because if I try to put it underneath like the faucet in the sink, it just kind of gets everywhere. Um, and it's not very helpful. Some optional additions as well. Uh, I really love having a tarp um, because I just lay it out in my living room and lay my clothes flat to dry on top of it. I'll go into why um, laying your clothes flat is so important, but uh, yeah, having a tarp is great. Um, some sort of drying rack is awesome as well. Um, they sell a bunch of them that are like fully collapsible so they don't have to like be taking up space in your laundry room. Um, also a wooden spoon <laughs> is really great. Um, I always have like 
like pretty like elaborate nail art so I don't like to get my fingers and my finger nails in like a lot of detergent because that tends to you know erode the quality of like my cuticles away <laughs> so I um, like to stir my clothes with a nice wooden spoon um, and also glo kitchen gloves are great as well just to make sure that you're not getting all of those strong detergents and solvent solvents on your fingers um, and keeping your hands soft and smooth so highly recommend especially if you're like me and you spend a lot of money on your nails um, so yeah that's basically kind of the tools of the trade I have a lot of preferred detergents um, one of my favorites is soak wash because it's rinse free um, you can actually just wash your clothes, wring it out, and you're done. You don't have to like waste money, like waste water rinsing out all the soap over and over again. And so soak is really nice for plushies or anything that's like kind of bulky, like faux fur, because um, for me, I hate how much water is wasted when you do laundry and the constant rinsing and the constant sight of seeing like soap still coming out of your item. Um, it's just kind of awful and soak is a great way to um, counteract that. They sell them in little tiny packets as well which is great for travel um, so that way if you need to do any laundry on the fly you have this little packet of detergent. In fact I actually have one right here so they're really nice and small. Um, I also really like Biz, the powder formula. Um, you can find this in most uh, most like stores I feel like. Um, it has enzymes that help break down like tougher stains. So in general, if you find like an enzyme detergent, um, doing like a search for one will find an equivalent brand in your area because I believe Biz is like kind of only an American brand. Um, but you, there are enzyme detergents everywhere you go. OxyClean is another really popular one. Um, I just prefer Biz to OxyClean. I think it's a bit stronger. Um, I love Clorox <laughs> bleach and stain remover pens. Um, for me, I never keep like just a bottle of bleach in my house ever. I don't feel the need to use bleach, honestly. Um, I never wash wipes that I'm trying to bleach clean, but having the little pen is great for if I have a really bizarre stain or like color bleed on like one tiny piece of lace. The bleach is really good for, for that, like the little bleach pens. Um, having the stain remover pen, throwing it into your bag and having it with you in case you have like an accident while you're out and about, that's great too. Um, there's also Retro Clean, which this is kind of a spendier option, but um, it's basically formulated specifically for vintage clothes and linens and is great for getting the yellow out specifically because yellowing in general is just a, size, a sign of your garment aging. Um, so I love retro, retro clean when I'm washing like old school Lolita pieces, especially because, um, they tend to be made, like they're just more delicate. They've been out in the world for longer and usually their only issue, um, is the fact that they've yellowed. So retro clean is great for that. Again, a bit on the spendier side, it kind of has like a hyper specific purpose. I really would only recommend someone purchasing like a bag of this if they see themselves doing a lot of like older vintage clothing restoration. I also get the question a lot about a cruelty-free alternative. Um, I really like the laundress. Um, they're again like kind of spendy, but they are a one-stop shop. Um, they have perfumed and fragrance-free alternatives. I personally don't like a lot of fragrance in my detergent and I find their fragrance very strong. So if you're someone who actually loves like this like floral smell to like be kind of wafting off of your clean laundry, highly recommend their scented stuff. Um, but they do do fragrance free, which is great. Um, I'll be maybe using a little bit of laundress later. Um, I have their stain solution. Um, but honestly, even just subscribing to their uh, email list is great because they're constantly sending like out little articles and little tips for how to clean like very specific garments or linens. Um, and they're just generally a great alternative if you just want to make sure you're purchasing from a place that's cruelty free and um, is certified accordingly. So that's the laundress. Um, there's also household solutions. Um, baking soda, white vinegar, vodka. <laughs> um, I honestly, vodka is my favorite because I actually don't like drinking vodka, but I love it for stain removal. Um, 
it's a great thing to like ask for a shot of at a bar if you like spilled something on yourself. <laughs> so uh, all of these items, like you just want to water them down, um, di dilute them and put them in a spray bottle and spray them out to stains. Don't mix these things like baking soda and vinegar, honestly, together don't do anything <laughs> like you're like just pick one and go with it a lot of times to um like you're better off just like especially if you're kind of new to laundering you're fine just buying like a package detergent um these are just good solutions for like if i don't know you you ran out of what you were hoping to use and you really need to get the stain out i've like like i said i've gone like i've dropped feet on myself at a restaurant and ask them for a shot of vodka so I can just go into the bathroom and like water it down in a cup and just kind of like like rinse out the stain and apply it to the stain. So I'm a huge proponent of vodka for stain removal. General tips, um, you want to wear gloves and keep water warm and stir your clothes occasionally. So that's why I kind of mentioned having the wooden spoon. Um, to keep water warm, I highly recommend trying to do your laundry during the day when the sun is out because just in general, your whole house is warmer when the sun is out. Um, so that'll like keep the heat in your clothes. I like to um, close like all the curtains and the doors to kind of like keep the heat in the bathroom. I also have a radiator in my bathroom, so I'll like turn that up just to kind of keep everything a little bit warmer um, where I'm trying to wash my clothes. So dry cleaning, um, dry cleaning isn't actually a dry process, but it's water free. So they're def your clothes are basically soaked in different solvents and cleaners that help remove the stains and deodorize the fabric. Um, in the long term, these chemicals can actually hasten yellowing. So it's kind of nice to reset your clothes with hand washing. Um, my best tip for finding a reliable dry cleaner is like asking around your local community, checking out Yelp reviews. And um, I mean, now this isn't as much of an option, but like you can bring the clothes into the dry cleaner and see how they react. Like if they sound like really overwhelmed by what you're handing over to them, probably a good sign to just not leave your clothes with that dry cleaner. Um, if for some reason you also live in the DC area, I use Dry with two Y's, Drop. Um, they're really great. They're actually, they pick up your laundry foam lockers, so it's contact, it's contactless. Um, so it's also fine for COVID. Um, but yeah, basically dry cleaning. Like I, I honestly, a lot of your very yellowed clothes are probably just like it's just the solvents from the dry cleaning process and from the factory garment working process that is just like starting to turn yellow over time. It has nothing to do with like your activity level or like what you're doing to your clothes. That's just normal. You're going to find yellowing in spots that you didn't see yellowing like three months before, um, which is a good segue into this. <laughs> um, yellowing. So Oh, here's a before and after that I forgot I put on the slide. Um, what causes yellowing? Um, a lot of things, uh, cigarette smoke, exhaust fumes, um, but it's also kind of the easiest damage to reverse when that's what's caused the yellowing. It's stinky. <laughs> like when, when you like put something that's yellowed due to pollutants into water, your entire bathroom is going to start smelling like rotten eggs. It's very true. It's like sulfuric almost. It's kind of disgusting, but you know, it is what it is. You're trying to get everything clean. Um, deodorants actually do a lot in terms of like creating like pit stains, um, especially ones with aluminum or like antiperspirant properties. Like they tend to have ingredients that react with your sweat and hasten yellowing. Um, sometimes the way you store things, um, gen generally you want to like kind of give your clothes room to breathe. Um, and if you kind of shove everything into one place, like that lack of air circulation can actually like hasten yellowing. Um, it's kind of like going back to this whole pollutant idea. You're trying to like make sure your clothes have fresh air. And general age. So um, like cotton does not come out like white. It just doesn't. So there's a bleaching process done on like at the factory level to make it get to like that pure, pure white. And those chemicals will actually turn yellow over time. So if you have antique clothing, um, 
they tend to not yellow because that sort of chemical um, process to get things white was not something that would, was happening until like the mid 20th century. So that's pretty interesting. Um, um, synthetic materials also have an accelerated timeline for yellowing due to the plastics involved. Um, polyesters, like all those things love to turn yellow. Um, I don't know if any of you collect game consoles, but older game consoles that are made of plastic tend to turn yellow. Um, I've had buttons on my dresses turn yellow with age. That's like a fairly unfortunate like sign of age. And um, I'll touch on this very briefly, but um, bleaching plastic is like kind of hard and also makes the plastic brittle. So if something is yellow and it's plastic, it's probably better to learn to live with it. Here's the dreaded pit stain. Ah. <laughs> so um, <laughs> that, that is one that actually showed up. Like I laundered this dress and I think it was just my, like my, the deodorant I was, I used to wear more often kind of rubbing off into it and like turning it yellow. Um, so I've like soaked it in water here. So you, like I actually use a spray bottle to like spritz it wet. Um, so you can kind of see how yellow it became. Um, so like, I'm going to give you a biology lesson. It's going to be a little gross, but sweat is made up mostly water, but also ammonia, sugar, and salts. And it's not smelling on your own. It's the bacteria in your body reacting to those chemicals that make your sweat stinky. So antiperspirant, although it like sounds like this really great thing, like, oh, I don't have, like, it'll keep me from sweating. The chemicals that it uses to like keep that sweat from coming out of your body um, actually kind of accelerates your pit stains. So like even though you're sweating less with an antiperspirant, you're probably going to get a worse pit stain. Um, so yeah, like it, like you're, you're better off just getting like an aluminum free deodorant that like odor controls, but doesn't necessarily like control the amount you're sweating. Um, but you know, if you can't do that, like I'm actually someone who has a lot of sensitivities to like aluminum free alternative deodorant types. Like I kind of get rashes. Um, the best thing to do is like treat your clothes right after you've changed. Um, just like quickly spritz it down with like a stain remover. And then when you do end up getting around to laundry day, it's already been sitting there with like some stain remover on like the pit area and throwing it into the wash. Um, we'll get it all out. So this is wild, but nature's miracle is actually great for reversing the damage <laughs> from pit stains. Um, it's literally like sweat and pee are kind of similar. <laughs> so you can use nature's miracle on like your pit stains and it'll come out. Um, you can also do a two to one solution of white vinegar to water. Um, and just basically you want to pre-treat. Pre-treating is really important for the more sudden stains. The moment you take off your clothes, pre-treat them, but you know, wait for your clothes to build up before you do like a full tub of laundry because it's just less water waste and less time too. You don't want to be like hand washing every single day. Like find like one day a week to wash your clothes and you're good to go. So um, just in general, like I, there's a lot on the slide. I got really chatty on it, but um, just generally soak the entire garment in warm water, daytime soaking preferred. Um, and don't be afraid to like leave your clothes in the tub for days. Um, this is why I also recommend if you don't have like a tub that like isn't really being used like I do, just get like a plastic, a plastic like bucket. Um, but just throw your clothes in there, let it sit for as many days as you feel like. I've actually put some really severely yellowed clothes and left it in the tub for like a whole week. Um, primarily because I was lazy, but it didn't hurt the clothes. It only made them whiter and it was a great way to just kind of like get them back to normal. So like, I honestly, I recommend just patience when it comes to removing these sorts of stains. Um, uh, and I, I also kind of mentioned briefly about how you can use hydrogen peroxide to take out um, the yellowing from like plastic buttons, but I just, I don't recommend it. For me, I actually kind of find the yellow buttons like charming. So um, yeah, I just, I just recommend doing that instead. Um,
So color bleed. Um, I feel like this is the question I get the most often. Um, there's always this like nervousness about like, oh my gosh, my prints are going to bleed. In general, um, especially in like J fashion styles, there's been a shift away from cotton and like natural fibers and more of an emphasis on polyester. And in large part, it's because polyester sublimation dyed um, things just don't bleed dye. Um, they're kind of set for life. Um, you could do like a quick rinse to like get any ex extra dye out if you think there will be any, but chances are there won't be. Um, the color bleed is just something that you need to worry about more with like red and like bright blue um, garments that are like natural fibers like cotton or wool. Um, then you're probably gonna see some color bleed. So prevention is your best bet. I like color catchers work really well um, don't be afraid to put like more than they suggest if you're extremely paranoid. Um, I, I honestly, I kind of double up on color catchers if I know it's a red garment because I just had so many bad experiences with like specifically red dye. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. Um, there's also no shame in dry cleaning if like you're just that intimidated by like washing your prints. Like, like I said, um, dry cleaning isn't necessarily like a bad process for your clothes. Um, just try to avoid places that use petroleum-based solvents because that's just gonna hasten the yellowing of your item. Um, but wash item in cold water um, and on their own. Um, I like to like honestly, um, I don't know, I don't think you can see it from this angle, but I have like a shower head that has like a big hose attached. I actually like to like take the shower head and just like literally hold up the dress and just rinse it off in the shower and see if it's bleeding color. Usually a very quick, very cold water rinse um, is good enough to just kind of make sure that like there's no color bleeding happening. If it's already happened, um, the techniques from the yellowing section actually work really well for color bleed as well, you know, soaking an item for an extended period of time. But one of the big things you want to do is um, you want to be changing the water much more often. And it's a it's a bit more of a wasteful process, but if it's it's either having like your red dress with white lace or having your red dress with pink lace, you might want to do it just this once. Um, just constantly be changing the water. If it sits in its like own like color bleeding water for too long, it won't really help. Um, it'll still end up like dying some more. So just keep, keep rinsing, keep like, replacing the water with fresh, cold water. Um, and you can also bleach and like use those little bleach pens to like get into like very specific areas. I've actually um, used sewing pins to kind of pin up a hem. So I have like direct contact with only the lace and I put a towel like under, a white towel underneath the lace and just like very delicately start bleaching the lace. This takes a really, really long time. And if you're not confident in like your rinsing process, oh, and like rinse with like a, a spray bottle or something that's like a very small spout of water um, to get the bleach out because if like the bleach moves up anywhere, it's gonna bleach the actual garment. So you have to be really, really patient if you're deciding to go the bleach route. I honestly don't recommend it. I really do think that um, most people just haven't tried um, just those constant rinsing and um, uh, stuff like that. Um, so there's also another thing you can do where like the constant rinsing of bleeding clothes can actually end up lightening the whole print. So you can also just set the dye in a vinegar and salt bath. This is something that I really only recommend um, if you look up a lot of videos of people doing this before you try to do it because like every garment is a little different. Um, when you set the dye, it is set. So like you're not going to be able to kind of undo what you've done. Um, so honestly, I kind of err on the side of just like constant cold water baths until the dye, until the water runs clear. Like I think that's your best bet. And remember, stains really do be like that sometimes. Like just unfortunately, some stains just don't come out. Um, but I really do think if you are like sitting there and um, constantly kind of hovering over your clothes, changing the water, um, being like a really specific with how you like put your stain remover products onto things, you're gonna do you're gonna do great and like a lot of things are going to come out or fade significantly to the point where like 
I don't think it's going to be very noticeable anymore. Um, so, you know, we can do it. Patience. So food stains. Um, I <laughs> embarrassingly get like curry stains on my outfits all the time because I really love curry and I eat it constantly. Um, and I remember I went to a meetup once where someone dropped, I think like the jam from like a tea set onto them and just started sobbing because they just thought like, this is it. This was it for their dress. So I'm gonna walk you through that, like <laughs> walk you through that scenario. Imagine you were out with friends and you spilled something onto your lovely garment. So first of all, you stay calm. You identify the stain. You figure out what it was that like fell onto you. If it's an oil-based stain, water isn't gonna help very much, but like oil, like other oils will. So just keep that in mind. Um, dab the excess with a clean white napkin, pref preferably, but you can also use a paper towel. Just like dab at the stain, get as much of it out as you can, um, or much of the excess out. Um, don't smear it around because that's just gonna make it bigger. Just try and see if you can like pluck and soak up as much of the stain as you can. Um, carrying a stain remover pen is great. You can use my vodka trick. Just ask the bartender for a little bit of vodka. Um, go into the bathroom and start treating your start treating your stain. I've heard of a lot of people just using the soap that's like in a public restroom. Please don't do that. A lot of like a lot of the soap that like restaurants and stuff tend to buy in bulk have like all kinds of like random chemicals and moisturizers in it. You do not know how it's going to react to your clothes. Just don't do that. You're better off just using plain water if you can't find anything else to like treat the stain with right now. You're doing a lot just by like making sure you're dabbing off the excess and like wiping as much of it clean as possible. Um, and just dab the area like with a dry napkin and let it air out and it will lighten significantly just from doing that alone. And when you get home, you know, we'll go through the, the the pre-treating process we talked about earlier, you take your more intense stain remover, you scrub it in, um, you let it sit for like a day, and then you wash you wash it like you normally would, and the stain should come out. So don't panic if you like drop something on yourself, I promise. I dropped like cherry juice on myself and it was fine. So for old food stains, um, the super condensed OxyClean Max Force works really well. Um, I actually, my favorite thing to do, and I'll probably like, I'll make this um, in front of you so you can kind of see what I do in terms of proportions, but I like to take a little bit of biz detergent and just a little bit of water and kind of stir it up until it literally becomes a paste. And I just apply it with a toothbrush and really just scrub it in. Um, and then, you know, just, once it's set for like a few hours, um, then just rinse everything out and see if it's faded and repeat the process if it's not fading. Um, if it's not fading drastically, um, I'll leave it on for like days, like I mentioned. Like you can just hang up the garment and just let it sit there with like the paste dry on it. Um, it's still doing work. So just leave it like that, come back to it in a few days, run the bath and it's going to like significantly lighten your stains. The great outdoors, um, grass, mud, rust, all those sorts of things. Actually, I don't have a hard time with these things at all um, compared to other sorts of stains. Dirt and mud are honestly like the easiest thing I've ever had to clean out of my clothes. Um, usually just simply washing the item gets most of them out. Um, if there's some dinginess, just soak the item for a little bit longer. There's a pattern here. So I shared these before and after pics of this Usa Kumia I cleaned because in large part it was just generally dingy from how it was stored and it had one foot that apparently had fallen into a mud puddle. Um, so it was just kind of all over covered in dirt. Um, I basically just, you know, I, I did my usual enzyme detergent wash, um, scrubbed in like a paste made with biz into like the specific areas that seemed like a little bit worse off, worse for wear, and um, let it dry. And it worked really, really well. Um, grass actually acts like a natural dye, so try and treat it immediately if you see a grass stain. Um, and again, like Biz, OxyClean, uh, Persil, Arm & Hammer, like a lot of those have like enzymes in them. 
So you can go ahead and try that on a grass stain. Also, like, um, protein-based stains do include blood. Um, I do not recommend using OxyClean um, for blood stains. Like, it actually tends to, like, like, make them turn, like, darker brown and, like, really set in. So treat it with, like, fizz or a vinegar-water combination before washing it like normal. It's been great for that sort of thing. So just some other materials. I'm just going to quickly fly through these because um, for a lot of them, it's just like washing any other delicate, you, like, the tricks aren't really any different. Um, so polyester velvet can be treated like any other delicate material because it's polyester. Um, silk velvet is probably just something that um, you need to make sure you're spot cleaning. Um, I wouldn't just dunk an entire silk velvet piece into the wash. Um, and don't use like heavy duty clips to hang up your velvet pieces because it'll kind of like um, make an indent into your velvet. You can use like a velvet brush um, to just kind of like get that plush feeling back, but sometimes it doesn't like reverse those clips. Um, I'll get into it later, but I actually have like a preferred skirt clip that I like to use um, for like your velvets for your faux furs. So here's a fur, faux fur uh, cape and muffler that I washed. Um, it is great for, um, like it's honestly like really easy to clean. Um, just gently rinse, uh, dab at like stains that have like kind of caked into the actual fur um, and like made it stick together. Just kind of like, like rub at that a little bit more softly um, and gently wring out the item. Uh, one of my big worries with faux fur is that if it doesn't dry fast enough, it can get like a weird smell. So I recommend just setting up like a little fan um, near it, running your AC um, near near the item, or even getting like a hair dryer that has a cool heat setting and just like blow drying the item just to kind of hasten the process a bit. Um, thankfully, uh, my like the the my apart my condo is like kind of on the dryer end, so I haven't had too many issues with faux fur, but in the summer when it's more humid, um, sometimes I do have to like use one of those tricks to kind of get it going. So pilling is a, is a huge problem with wool. I've kind of included a photo of what that looks like. It's kind of when the little fibers start to clump together and create like this texture on top of the actual knit. Um, the important thing to do is to use a fabric softener when you wash wool um, that way it's reducing the friction um, because like all of the like individual threads are kind of coated with something nice and smooth um, you can also use like a shaving razor to like very delicately remove um, the piling or pilling um, uh, they also have like sweater shavers which are much easier to use but um, it's much easier to just try and prevent pilling versus trying to remove it so just try to make sure you use some sort of fabric softener. I included one. Downy is a great fabric softener. You can use whatever, you know, suits your fancy. As long as it's more, like being called a fabric softener, you're good to go. Um, silk is another one. I A lot of people, for some reason, think like the moment you put silk in water, it'll completely disintegrate. Um, that is true for extremely old silk items, but most people don't have um, silk that's that old. So like, um, and especially like kimono silk is actually a, a, like a much thicker than your like silk scarves sort of thing. So you can like put them in like a very, very delicate wash. I honestly put very little detergent when I wash any sort of silk. Um, just the, like use like, like lukewarm water, um, maybe put a little bit of baking soda on like stains, but like silk is fine to get wet. You just don't want to like, leave it in a tub of water for a really, really long time. <laughs> pleather. So like a lot of Lolita shoes and bags are made with pleather. Pleather. I just really like the Mr. Clean Magic Eraser. That is honestly a great way to get little scuffs out of your bag. Um, for those who aren't familiar with it, you just kind of get it damp and then you just rub it against the stain and that's it. It's done and then you just pat it dry. Um, Store your pleather in a climate-controlled room. Um, generally, pleather will crack with age and with and in dry climates. So if you know that your closet's really dry or like you live in a dry climate, maybe invest in a humidifier if you have a lot of pleather shoes. Plushies. 
Plus you take a long time to dry, so get those hair dryers ready. Or um, I honestly just kind of, I bundle it, bundle it up in um, towels. And as soon as that towel gets like more wet, I just swap out the towels and I just keep doing that until like the bulk of the, like, the water has kind of been removed that way and then I leave it out to dry. Um, it's just more labor intensive. A cool setting hair dryer is much faster. I'm kind of speeding through these now because I have, I have quite a few more slides and I really want to have time for questions. So um, I touched on this briefly. Uh, deodorize and store your clothes in a way that will like help you, like that won't exacerbate stains and yellowing between washes. So um, it's like, if your clothes have only been worn for like a very brief period of time, it's fine to skip the wash and wait for, wait to wear it another time and then wash it. But just know that in between washes, um, you can do like some deodorizing. You can make sure you store it in, in a way where it's not like in close quarters with a bunch of other clothes. And that's a great way to make sure that like, you know, they don't get smelly or they don't turn yellow. So... Here's one of the skirt hangers I was talking about. Um, I like their, you can get them from Ikea. They're just a wooden bar. They're really great because um, they have felt on the inside. So when you kind of snap it onto delicate materials, it doesn't pinch them. Um, I really recommend that for storing like your pants or skirts or even just um, dresses that have like shirred sleeves. You tend to not want to hang them on sleeves because that'll stretch out the elastic. Um, don't like if, like a lot of people say um, to keep your clothes in like the dry cleaning bags that they come in, those like plastic film bags. I highly recommend not doing that. Um, you want your clothes to get air. If you do decide like I really need a garment bag because like I have pets or something and I don't want their hair getting all over it, um, you can buy cloth garment bags. Um, so definitely invest in those. Just do not store them in plastic for a, for a long term. Um, and you also don't want to just keep Febreze in your clothes all the time because the chemicals in Febreze can also like hasten yellowing and can also like exacerbate um, strong odors in your clothes. So getting a head start is important. Um, consider spraying down like a watered down vinegar solution on the inside of your clothes, especially areas that came in direct contact with your skin. Um, I always wear tank tops or camisoles that are made out of like a breathable material. So like my clothes are never really like directly touching my skin um, a lot of times, especially in the areas where I tend to sweat the most, which is like my core. Um, so that's like a really good thing to do. Um, so that way like your, your clothes don't end up being like drenched in sweat. Um, and you can actually start you know, drawing up a bath for your clothes, like right after your meat, like toss your clothes in there and like get to it in the morning after you've relaxed and recharged. So I really, I meant to actually like bring the steamer in here so I could show you, but I, steamers are great to kind of deodorize, remove wrinkles and just like put some care into your clothes. I also just really like steaming things because in the process of steaming, I end up um, <laughs> I end up seeing stains I didn't notice before, so that's also nice. Um, Febreze, like, I've been, like, knocking on Febreze a lot. You're, like, Febreze is okay. You just don't want it to be the only thing you do to your clothes. Um, it, it's great if you just kind of, like, want to get, like, a nicer scent to your clothes because they're just kind of smelling like your closet. Um, you can get, like, those pine blocks that you can hang, hang in your closet. Those are great, too. So, drying! Um, in general, I like to lay out all of my clothes. So this is an example, like this is a photo of the tarp that I use with some towels on top of the tarp and I just laid out all my clothes flat to dry. Um, a lot, like shrinking can happen, especially with natural fibers. So the goal is you want to be able to, um, recreate the shape, the intended shape of your clothes while they're drying. So then that way they don't shrink in like uneven lengths and stuff like that. It doesn't happen that often, but it's something to keep in mind. You can get like little weights that you can use to like kind of weigh down like the corners of your clothes. So then that way it's not shrinking up. That's great for knits, especially because knits do tend to have a bit of shrinkage. Um, drying prints, screen prints are sometimes dryer safe. Um, if you can guarantee that your dryer is actually on, like has a true delicate setting, um, turn the print inside out and like throw it in your dryer. Honestly, just 
lay it flat to dry. Um, I like to turn it over after a few hours so that the other side can dry evenly as well. Um, drying racks are great too. You don't have to turn them over like I do. And then usually when most of the water has like left the print, I just hang it up um, over my tub and just let the rest um, kind of drip down. Um, in general, you don't want to hang a sopping wet dress because that will stretch the materials and put a lot of strain on the straps. Take your humidity into account. I've talked about this a little bit. Um, you don't want mold or mildew. Uh, bleach is the, the best way to remove stains from mildew, but um, if they're non-bleachable, lemon and white, white vinegar are great, um, but that does tend to lighten colors a bit. So you do want to be careful. Honestly, just you know, stay on top of your clothes. Don't just completely ditch them once they've been drying. Um, you want to like give them like that air to breathe. <laughs> So, yeah, finally, question time. I'm sorry I rambled for a while. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and close up this PowerPoint um, so then that way I can actually see everyone's comments and questions. Um, but basically, this is actually, some of this load is hanging up behind me. This was the last load of laundry I did. This is kind of how it ends up looking. Um, I try to wait until I have like, a good amount of clothing and then I'm good to go, so. I am open to take your questions. Oh yeah, and please, I have a coffee. If you really liked, um, you know, this panel, please consider um, donating. That would be great. <laughs> so I'll take your questions in the meantime because I, in my hand, Oh, I saw someone mention the Wonder Wash. Yes, the Wonder Wash is awesome. Um, I, like one of my friends mentioned it. I was looking into it. It looked really cool. <laughs> I, because I have a tub, I probably won't be getting one, but um, they look to like be a fairly nice capacity and they're great for probably just one outfit. Um, I wouldn't, like I generally don't like to overstuff anything that's like in a closed container like that. I talk a lot about kind of giving your, your clothes room to breathe. So that's important. Um, so makeup stains, uh, I see a question about makeup stains. Makeup stains are, are oil-based usually. Um, so a great way to get those out is to like use like an enzyme detergent like Biz. Um, I, I have a better time with that. If you use an oil-free makeup uh, remover or makeup, not makeup remover, <laughs> just an oil-free makeup, uh, even those tend to have a lot of chemicals that are just better off with Biz. Um, I really scrub in a Biz paste. In fact, I'll just start making some Biz paste like live. Um, so whew. there's like Biz right below me. So I just have a little bit of water. This is way too much Biz, but I'm just gonna sprinkle a bit in there. Take a toothbrush, just kind of stir it around. So I put too much water in this, so it's like watery. So I'm gonna have to put a lot of Biz. Oh, tips for keeping moths away. Um, I honestly, I just use mothballs. <laughs> I know that's like a really simple solution, but I just use mothballs. Um, I just kind of put them at the base of my closet um, if I know I have that problem. I haven't had issues in my current place I'm living in. Um, and also that's like a good reason why you don't want your clothes in like close proximity because if you put mothballs underneath, it's gonna really get stinky. Um, lavender pouches are great too. And I believe like those little pine blocks um, also help prevent moths away. You can get like a little pine block that like hangs on a little hanger. Um, that's also a great one. So I honestly, I eyeball it. I'm not great at like figuring out what the proper proportion is. Um, I literally just eyeball it until it kind of gets a more paste-like consistency. Um, I'm just gonna, I'll probably just make way too much of this now. Ah, cedar, thank you. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see that for a second. What was your proudest Alita cleaning moment? Um, proudest, so I, I'm trying to think. <laughs> um, I, I actually shared a photo of it. Um, I had this tartan, um, baby the stars shine bright JSK that was 
super yellowed. The lace was like honestly just bright yellow, even though it was supposed to be white. Um, and the print was bleeding. Um, and it came to me like that. Uh, and I was able to restore it. It it took a lot of like finagling. I um, I kind of had it perfectly perched on top of like on the edge of my uh, bathtub, so I could like really sit there and like get the get this paste basically like right into like the lace and then rinse it out and, <laughs> and do that over and over again. And then uh, because it was bleeding and it had a white bustle, I actually just like, I just kept doing like that cold water shower for it and it came out fine. It looks brand new. Oh yeah, Jordana. Oh, I washed, I washed your, your beautiful skirt. It was very easy. It's super simple. <laughs> Oh yeah, um, I see Goblin K saying um, socks. Yes, so my socks got like that dark bit. Um, I've had, I. it kind of sounds like I'm a one trick pony and truth is I am. I just, once I discovered that biz, ta biz paste works really well, I kind of use it on everything. Um, and like, it, it really is just a patience game. Like just rub in that buzz, like the biz paste, like get it in nice and like deep and then, um, just forget about it for a little bit and rinse it out. Lolita's Windex, it's true. I have um, a little, a little boyo here who's like kind of dingy. My friend was like, can you help? And I was like, okay, I can help. So I'm gonna like, while I'm still taking questions, I'm gonna like attempt to like get this nose bit all nice and bizzed. So. So bit like I if I remember correctly, I think Purcell might be available in some parts of Europe. And I've heard Purcell is about um this like it is kind of similar. Yeah, I um I think I have a picture of this, but here it is again. Biz. <laughs> I'm just an ad for biz. So here we go. I'm gonna like take the spray bottle and kind of sprints her little nose. So I like to do this um, because in general detergent just soaks better um, in a piece when it's already kind of damp. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of this paste on a toothbrush. Sorry, I'm like trying not to like drop detergent all over my laptop. Oh, tips for keeping Lolita in your closet safely. Um, so I try to invest in very thin hangers um, because wider, bulkier hang hangers tend to like stretch out the fabric um, on the top of your pieces. So I get like thin hangers. I like, the, I know this is like a big ask for folks with like larger wardrobes and limited space, but you do want to like not overstuff your closets. Um, you know, when like a great thing to do is like if you have a, a seasonal wardrobe, um, excuse me, um, back away or pack away the things that like you're not going to wear anytime soon. So like if it's summer, put your coats in like space bags and like kind of tuck them under your bed or somewhere else. So the coats that you are wearing through the summer are kind of like hanging out with more space. Um, that's like a really important thing. I actually keep a little fan in my closet to kind of like aid air circulation because my closet is like directly above my kitchen. And sometimes the like exhaust goes up into my closet. Um, so I just keep a fan in it. So here I go, I'm like just, so now it looks like this Kumi has like, <laughs> I don't know how to describe it, like shaving cream on, on her, on her face. So this is how, oh no, I wasn't going to say that. How dare you? <laughs> yeah, um, it's, it's hard. Uh, I also, for knits, uh, and for anything with like elastic in the sleeves, I fold them and put them away in like a drawer or wardrobe. Um, I don't hang them. Um, that just puts a lot of strain on the elastic. <laughs> so, yeah, here, here's the kumi. 
I see Alexis. Sorry, sorry. That is that because my power because went my out. Power went out. So I just rejoined, so I just rejoined the, the studio, on, studio my phone. on my phone. I didn't oh, mean I did. to put myself into the broadcast. I hope you're okay. But now but I don't know how to get myself into the podcast. Oh, here we go. Oh, here we go. Um, here's another thing I want to wander. Oh my gosh, this is a bigger dress. So I like definitely spilled wine on this. So <laughs> this is basically what I'm going to try and work on next. I have a stain on a yellowing dress. What should I treat first? I honestly would treat the yellowing because the yellowing, the, the treatment of the yellowing will probably fade the stain significantly. So then you have less work to do. Um, I just in general, like it, I, I go from like big problem to small problem. Um, just because it like, you know, it conserves water and that sort of thing. Um, sometimes what I do too, while my clothes are like laying in the bath, I will, um, kind of pick up the areas that are more heavily stained and scrub extra like detergent into them with a the toothbrush and really get it in deep and then like continue to let the thing soak. So sometimes I try to do things simultaneously. So um, I kind of, if it's like an item that isn't really stained, I honestly, I'll just leave it in. Um, normally what I do is I draw the bath in the morning, I go to work and in the evening I just take everything out um, because it, it does take up a lot of time. Um, if it's like a weekend and I have the full day, um, I'll only leave it in for like two hours. Um, and that's honestly my laziness. Um, I've had dresses like come out perfectly clean in like 15 minutes of soaking, um, especially if it's not something that was heavily stained. Um, and I just stir them. Mm. I just try to stir them like like every like 10 minutes kind of um if it's a long soak i honestly only stir them at the very beginning and then proceed to forget about them i'm not like extremely you know like focused on <laughs> my laundry usually i'm usually just, like um multitasking and doing other things it's a great like you know set it and forget it sort of chore <laughs> Oh yes, it's just that biz paste is all that I'm using. So, um, I, so here I go, I've like gone ahead and soaked the wine <laughs> stains with water and then I'm just gonna go ahead and like get into it with biz. Um, I wanted to use some of the, the Laundra stain remover this time, but I feel like, you know, that's something that's like in a bottle, it's like already, like easy, there's like really no prep time. I highly recommend like Launders products to someone who like doesn't want to spend a lot of time frank like figuring out the proportions for detergents and stuff like that. So yeah, I'm basically just scrubbing this in. In general, um, it's always a good idea to um, get your clothes wet first before you add the detergent. Um, so. I'm not doing that now because I like if I turn on my faucet, it's really loud. So I've already filled in. <laughs> I filled my bathtub. So there it goes into the tub. <laughs> this one didn't have any stains, so it's just going in. <laughs> Spoon, just get it all up in there. I'm also cheating by washing like whites because whites are like light colors are really easy for my friends who wear lots of black. Um, just be aware of sunscreen. So yeah, that's basically the whole thing. Um, if you have a chance uh, or like the means to, I would really appreciate um, donations to my coffee. Uh, feel free to like hit me up on social media. I'm at underscore Avina underscore on Instagram and on Twitter, I'm Avina underscore K, um, like fairy K K. Um, so Feel free to just message me with any of your questions and thank you so much for tuning in. I've been wanting to do a laundry panel for a really long time. Um, so yeah, thanks so much. I believe Dolphiel is going to be uh, presenting the next panel. She's the greatest. So check that out for sure. <laughs>